Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below for donuts or any other game. Hello my friends, today it's time to make the donuts. Yes, we're layering on those frosting, layering on those sprinkles, and trying to get five in a row. Today we're taking a look at donuts. This is a two-player abstract game from my favorite designer, Bruno Cathala. Uh, and it has some similarities to a very popular classic game called Othello. It's kind of like that in reverse. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Donuts is an abstract strategy game where each of you is going to be a donut color, either the lighter color or the darker color, and you're trying to get five in a row in any direction. Now, these, uh, these are not stickered. These are screen printed and they're double sided. And I'm very glad that they're not stickers because they look nice and you didn't have to spend the time stickering them. Now, the board is randomly made up at the beginning of the game. There's actually four squares here and they are... You know, they're double-sided and you can randomize where they are, what side there are, and which, you know, which rotation they are. So every game is going to be different from a strategy perspective. On your turn, you're going to place a, a donut. So let's say you place one here. Now again, this, you're trying to get five in a row in any way, here, here, or diagonal. Now, if you look at this, the line that is in between these two colors shows you where the opponent must place. So if, if this color went here, the darker color, oh, and by the way, usually what you do is you put two of them here so, pe so you, that people know which was the last donut placed because it gets a little confusing after a while. So here you go, so this player could go, the other player could go here, 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 or here. So if they instead go here, and again, you just put that on top just to remind people where you just went because you're thinking and you're looking and then it's obvious where you went. So now this player went here, the other player can go here, 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 or here. Okay, so maybe they go here, just like that. And so this says now the brown player can go so like here, 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 here. Remember they go like this, and they go like this. And so now the other player is gonna go like this. And so that's pretty much how the game works. Now let's say it's a little further in the game and the, the brown player went just like this. So now it's the yellow player's turn. If you place, now they can place here, 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 here. If they place here, when you insert a donut that's surrounded or in between two of the other colors we have now done this then these flip just like that it's almost like the opposite of Othello like on Othello if you got two things on the end everything in between flips here you insert and then other things flip now it's not yellow players turn again but if yellow were to place here because these two are inserted between these two these would then flip and that would be the end of the game because they would have five in a row for example Sometimes you're placing a donut and this one says, well, we place here. This means the other player has to play here because it's the only thing. When they place there, it's going diagonal and now there's no legal placement. So the other player gets to place anywhere they want, which could be very advantageous. That's pretty much the game. Get five in a row in any direction you win. And if, you, if it, everyone plays all their donuts and you have not gotten five in a row, then whoever has the biggest sort of contiguous area wins. All right, well, there is donuts. As I mentioned in the overview, uh, well, I love it when games use sort of classic mechanisms of old classic games, whether it's Mancala or, you know, you name it, like using older style things and making them new and doing different things with them. Now, I have no idea if this was inspired by the game Othello, but it definitely seems like it was. Maybe Bruno never played it. I don't know. I think that game was international. Uh, it's a game that I played a ton as a kid. I loved it. And this is kind of like Othello in reverse, because in Othello, you're trying to sort of bookend your opponent and then flip all those. Here, you're trying to insert in the middle and then flip all of them on the other sides, uh, which is really, really clever. So I love that it sort of takes like that Othello feel and literally twists it on its head, does the opposite. Uh, the best thing to me, in addition to that, is the movement and your selection. So Bruno came up with a game uh, a couple years ago that I absolutely loved. I think it was my two-player game of the year that year called Sobek Two-Player, which was a two-player version of an older game he had designed called Sobek. And this game uses the same movement style that they did here. I think he just sort of like reused it here because it works so well, where when you select something, it is telling your opponent where in that line can they select the next thing? Which is then telling you where you can select. So I love this because you're looking at where I'm gonna place and you're looking, it's so simple. Place a, don a donut at your turn, that's it. If you put in the middle, in, if you insert in the middle, flip the other ones, that's it. That's the whole game mechanically. 
But you're sitting there and you're thinking, you're like, hmm, if I place here, that means they have to place somewhere here. If they place here or here, then I can place here and then that will get me this. And you're, you're thinking, you know, it's just, it's so clever that, you, that, that everything you do has ramifications and you're looking in the future. And I love that aspect of it. So this game has simple rules and lots of depth because of that. Again, place a, do place a donut and that's it. Next player's turn. But there is a ton of things to think about. I love the randomized setup uh, that really makes this game feel like a different puzzle every time you play it. You take those four boards, you flip them around, you rotate them, and it's just gonna randomize how the movements are. So never, no two games are gonna feel exactly the same, and I like that. Uh, like in most abstracts, you're looking two or three moves ahead. Like I said, you're placing the, the, the donut, but you're thinking, if I place here, they might place there. If I place here, they're, you know, they, if they place here, then I can go here. They'll likely go here, and then I've got them in a trap to go here, right? And so I like, most abstracts are like this. It's a sort of, this is kind of like a no luck abstract with, it does have some luck in the setup, some randomization, but once you start, there's no luck. Uh, and that's very common in these types of games, and it works really well here, even though the game is so simple. Uh, I like that you're trying in that, thinking forward ahead. You're trying to give your opponent no choice at some time. I show you an example where like, hey, you go here, They'll go here, you can go here, and guess what? Now they have to go down here because it's the only spot. Uh, or you force them into a spot like that, like I showed in the overview where like, you are forcing them to go to the last spot. Oh, and guess what? Now that's, that's going to a spot that can't be placed, so you get to place it anywhere, giving you huge power in the game, and forcing them into something like that and backing them into the corner is really one of the main ways to win the game in this. So it's really clever the way that you're sort of trying to, it's a little bit like area control, but you're also trying to use the boundaries of the board and the lines and the how many is left to kind of like back them into a corner and sort of put them in checkmate, if you will. Uh, and I also like that if you don't get five in a row, there is a good tiebreaker for clumping things in the middle. I don't like it when abstract games often end in ties. This one doesn't because of the clumping. I like it. There's not a lot negative to say here. If you're looking for, you know, a a 10 minute or less, about 10 minutes, abstract game, maybe 15 if you're really thinking heavy, but a 10 minute abstract game that you could play multiple times in a row, maybe play two out of three, uh, that's usually what we do, and you like the no luck aspect, but you like the randomization, I think you know what you're getting here. I think from watching this, you should know whether you're gonna like this game or not. Simple abstract, lots to think about, beautiful little theme. Uh, but the only thing is a lot of these, well, pretty much all no luck abstracts, they're unforgiving to new players, meaning if you play against someone that hasn't played before and you have a lot of experience, you're gonna destroy them. Uh, so you have to sort of like slowly bring them up to speed until they're competitive. That's it, that's that's the only negative I had got here really. Uh, and that's pretty much with all abstracts. So if you're looking for that quick filler 10 minute abstract to play while other people are waiting for things, this is a good one. That is Donuts. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play, and if you missed their 4.0 Kickstarter, you can still late pledge and take advantage of over 40 unlocked stretch goals and early fulfillment. This campaign featured a new young Sherlock table, perfect for children's gaming and movable coffee table, 10 new thematic mats by top artists like Vincent Dutre, a new designer art series Mycroft Topper with thematic art from Brent Woodside, and some of the best package deals they've had including game mat bundles. Go to GameToppers LLC or click the link below to late pledge now.